and favor of the Lord. You know, we think we're so in control of our relationships, and we think we're so in control of who we're with, and, and, and really, it's honestly, it all comes from God. You get a woman, it's not just because, you, you know, you've been dating, you've been looking around, and now you have one. It doesn't really work that way. It comes from God. You find a good thing. In some translation says, he who puts away a good thing and turns to an adulterous woman is a fool. You know, it's true when you read it, you know. But... So that's what the gift of, uh, the gift of a, of a woman is a to a woman is a child and a gift to a man is uh, as a woman. Does that make sense? You guys get that? Is that right? When you sit that way, <clears throat> when you sit that way, it's, it's kind of amazing, you know. So how many of us ever see women that way? <laughs> you know, Desiree, have you ever seen yourself that way? That you're that you're an actual gift and that your relationship is pending not by what you think, but by who God sees you fit to be with that you have been made a gift for that person. You know, not everybody appreciates it. Not everybody knows what it is. But when you see yourself as a gift, it's actually amazing, you know? It really, really is. So, when uh, Jacob's wife wanted a child really bad, she really wanted a child, she was nagging him, and he said, I'm not God that I can give you a child. He got frustrated, he said, who do you think I am? So. She began to pray to the Lord because she realized it's God I have to, it's God that's going to give me a child, you know? So we got to be that way too. Is if we're to acquire vision or to find out what our purpose is, and like Pastor Levi said, to have a passion for it, we're going to have to get intimate with God so that he can reveal those things to us in, in his timing, you know? His timing is different than our timing. He said, my ways are not like your ways. My thoughts are not like your thoughts. They're higher. Amen? Amen. Amen. But I have a story in mind. <clears throat> I have a story in mind that I want to share. But another story that's been in my pending file that I've been asking the Lord. I want you to give me some background and some revelation on this very, very mysterious story. And uh, it's an Old Testament story. And as we understand, you know, what, what, what they did in the Old Testament, we do. What they did natural in the Old Testament, we do in the spirit in the new. Amen? Amen. You know, they used weapons of warfare that were natural to take out a natural enemy in Canaan. But we use the weapons of a warfare not carnal, but mighty in God for pulling on our strongholds. They are spiritual. You know, so we got to keep that thinking in mind, understanding that there's the dispensation of that law and the dispensation of grace. Where it was an eye for an eye and a tooth for a tooth, over here we, we, we bless them and we forgive them. <laughs> Amen? Amen. <clears throat> How many of you love your enemies this morning? That somebody does. Amen. <laughs> okay. Let's go to Genesis 38. This is a very mysterious story. And uh, there's there's much to get out of it, but I you know, I just want to see what the Lord gives us out of it. Just say amen when you're there. Amen. We're going to the first amen. chapter, Genesis 38. And let's read it together as a group. And like I say, don't don't run on because if you if you read something that way. You know, then you just read it as an exercise. You want to try to see what God gives us out of it. Now, may the Lord add his blessing to this word. Amen? Amen. Now, what we're talking about this morning is vision. And how one conceives from the Lord vision. Amen? Amen. Verse 1 says, uh, And it came to pass at the time that Judah went down from his brethren and turned into a certain Adulamite whose name was Hura. Hura. Now, I want you to know before Eli reads verse 2, that the name Judah means praise. Does everybody know that? Amen. The name Judah means praise. Go, go ahead, Eli. And the word of God says, Then he saw a Canaanite woman, the daughter of Shua, and he married her. And he slept with her. Okay, before we read three, <clears throat> how many of us knows that these people were told not to cohabitate or mix with the Canaanite people? They were told not to, but yet God in his mercy, you know, he brought forth the Messiah through a, through a Gentile bride. Joseph's wife was a Gentile. The church is a Gentile bride, you know? So it wasn't his desire, but he, he made it happen. And, and we see a type of Christ here because he got with a Canaanite woman, which he was not supposed to do, amen? Somebody wants to read a, a three? And she became pregnant gave birth to a son whom Judah named Er. Or er. Er. So, what happens when two people get together and they become intimate? What usually follows? 
<laughs> so there goes. So what they did in the natural, we do in the spirit. What we become intimate with, we'll conceive after. Get together with ungodly people, ungodly things. All that's going to be produced is something carnal and not of God. It's going to be the wrong vision. So we see that he has a son. <clears throat> but the good thing is to see is that Judah had a, a desire. Like Pastor Eli said, he had a passion and a desire for vision. He wanted a wife. He wanted children. And he had a son. And his name was Ur. And so now the name Ur means awake. And so, you know, once your vision is awake, it's one thing for it to be awake, for it to live. But it's another thing for it to stay alive. Amen? Amen. Amen. Anna, can you name the three reasons why a, a child aborts? In the womb? Um, malnutrition. Not taking care of it. Louder. <coughs> Neglect. Um, well, I'm close enough. My brain's stuck. Yeah. Okay. <laughs> so... A vision is something like a pregnancy, it's something that you're pregnant with, it's something that you carry, and it's something that's living, but it's also very fragile. It's easy to, to die. It can abort, and it can also abort itself. Remember? That was what you're probably looking for, right, Adam? Yeah. It can abort itself. It can detach because if it feels unloved, if it feels neglected, if it feels rejected, the baby can abort itself. So it's the same thing with the vision. And so now the first son that, that bore him is named Ur, and it means awake. Amen? Somebody wants to read for it? She conceived again and gave birth to a son named Ur, and named him Onan. Now the name Onan means strong. So now his vision is awake, and his vision is strong. But well, remember, his vision... It wasn't conceived the right way because he was with an ungodly person. Amen? Amen. Well, God can use anything and he can use anybody. Amen? Somebody want to read five? And she yet again conceived and bare a son and called his name Shalom. And he was at Shezib when she bare him. His name means petition. And that's how we conceive many times too, is that we have to have we have to make our petition known to God. Amen. Somebody read the next one. Six. Judah chose. Go for it. Judah got a wife for her and his firstborn and he named his Now, the word, the word, the name Tamar means a palm tree. And remember what it says in the, in the Proverbs that when we put our faith in God that we shall be like a palm tree, that our leaves should not wither, you know? So, you know, <clears throat> though she was a Canaanite, she was a very, very strong woman. Um, unlike, unlike Judah's sons. Somebody read seven. But her, Judah's firstborn, was wicked in the sight of the Lord, and the Lord put him to death. Wow, it's crazy, huh? That's crazy. So you know, you know. So like I said, look, like the word says, not not every vision is from God. And sometimes you know we conceive the wrong vision because of the wrong environment, people's per persons, places, or things. Then God will have to sometimes put us into that vision. Now this is not this is. Spirit, we're spirit, speaking spiritually, remember? Okay. <clears throat> so we wonder why not all visions always work out. Amen? Amen. Somebody read eight. Then Judah said to Onan, Lie with your brother's wife, and fulfill your duty to her as a brother-in-law to produce offspring for your brother. <clears throat> now, <clears throat> she wanted her other son to carry on. The, he, wanted the, the, he wanted his other son to carry on his dead son's seed which was to keep the vision alive which was his name which was their law amen and ona knew that the seed should not be his and it came to pass when he went in unto his brother's wife that he spilled it on the ground lest that he should give seed to each other let's pause there for a second pretty graphic stuff huh mm -hmm. pretty graphic stuff 
But you know, the Lord considered that to be an evil thing, a wicked thing, you know? <clears throat> because see, Judah coming from his father Jacob, he understood vision. He understood where it came from. And so he was a man driven by vision and even wanted his sons to have vision and to and to and to continue their vision. And it was instilled in them. They knew. And that's how we should be. Not only should we have vision, but when we have children, that we should pass on that desire to have that spiritual vision for them. Amen. That they might do things for the Lord and live for the Lord. Amen. 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 So, somebody read 10. And what he did was wicked in the sight of the Lord. And he put him to death also. He didn't plan that day, huh? Man. God, merciful God. Man. 11. Then Judah said to his daughter-in-law, Tamar, go back to live in your father's house and don't marry until my young son, uh, Sheila, or, um, grows up. Judah was afraid that, how do you say that? She, Sheila also would die like his brother, so Tamar returned to her father's home. You know, before we go on, you know, wherever there's a purpose and wherever God has a plan and wherever there's a true vision, remember, God is the one that's really the author of all these things. See, she deserved to have that vision, that son, because as we said earlier, a child is a gift to a woman, just like the woman is a gift to her man, you know? And Judah did an evil thing because he said, man, she already put down two of my sons. You ain't going to go for the third one. He said, go live back with your father. And I'll let you know when he grows up. But he wasn't going to send them. Amen? Amen. But, Amen. but Tamar, her name means palm tree. She wasn't going to give up about that easy. Because palm trees don't just fall down. They bend. Amen? And that's how the word says we ought to be. Somebody read, a, I think it's a 12. Okay, 11. Somebody wants to read it? No, I think it's 12. No, it's 12. Yeah. It's okay. After a long time, Judah's wife, the daughter of Shua, died. When Judah had recovered from his grief, he went up to Timnah to the man who was shearing his sheep and his friend, the Torah, the Adler, and I went with him. 13? <coughs> So she took off her widow's garments, covered herself with a veil, wrapped herself, and sat in an open place, which was on the way to Tamna, for she saw that Shaili was grown, and she was not given to him as a wife. Okay, so here's what happened. So the father is on his way to do some business with some sheep. The daughter-in-law sees the son grown up, and she says, look, he's already a man. He's not bringing, he's not sending him to me to marry me. And, you know, so she felt like, you know, she, she knew what he was doing. She said, she's going to cheat me out of having children. He's going to cheat me out of, because see, it wasn't about uh, necessarily having a wife. He could have just impregnated her. And there's something in a woman that desires that vision. Amen? Amen. There's something there. That's why I say, you women, be encouraged, you know? Because there's a man out there. <laughs> I don't know where, but he's out there somewhere. But he, he really is, and, and God has made him. Amen? Because there's something in you that's calling him. Amen? Amen. Amen. <laughs> Even you, Chris. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> Miracles happen, bro. Just kidding. Just kidding. Okay, let's read 15. When Judah saw her, he thought she was a prostitute because she had covered her face 